Welcome back to Houston Newsmakers, where I'm joined by Fred Zeidman, the chairman of Gordian Group LLC, an independently owned investment group that specializes in mergers, acquisitions, public and private financing, and has a finger on the pulse of the oil industry worldwide. Welcome to you. Thank you. Thank you. And you know, the uh, uh, Gordian's purpose, uh, I, n none of us like to profit from anyone else's misery, but uh, we feel we have a very, very special niche and that the, the only thing we do is provide strategic advisory work. We do do regular investment banking function mm -hmm. for companies that are in distress. And we have a uniqueness in that we are, uh, we never represent the creditor. Mm -hmm. uh, um, all of our competitors, of course, would, be, would represent Citibank, Wells Fargo, the lenders. Uh, and of course, when you start to look at these distressed situations, there's virtually never anything left for the shareholders right. or the boards. Well, uh, uh, our uh, t total focus is protecting boards, managers, and shareholders. And as you look at what's so, been going on here locally, uh, th th certainly there are a lot of companies here that could be in a difficult situation, depending on what happens with the oil. The oil right. sector. Uh, took a hit here because of right. what happened in uh, Saudi Arabia. W why are we impacted by what goes on? Well, we're yeah. we are we are truly impacted in Houston. Uh, you know, we've been called the energy capital of the world. Uh, a lot of the uh, E and P business, uh, uh, exploration production business, is focused. Uh, here in Houston, but much more of it is outside of Houston. Dallas has been much more of an E and P company. Uh, Houston has really been the oil service uh, capital. We have uh, uh, most of the uh, major oil service companies, are, not most of, are, are, are uh, domiciled here and not there. And uh, one of the lessons I learned when I first got into this business. Uh, many years ago is if if they're not drilling wells they certainly don't need oil service companies mm -hmm. they don't need drilling contractors they don't need any of the suppliers uh and that's where the bulk of uh, houston's uh uh employment base has been uh, you know we've got two major industries here the energy and of course the medical center uh and this could very likely have a devastating effect on our energy industry primarily because of the number of people uh employed in that industry and of course you look at the uh, 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 stocks uh, and it's it's very easy you know to monitor uh, what's happened to dividend yields for some of the bigger companies but also you look at the price of the oil service stocks uh, and you see that there is uh, certainly stress if not distress on all of them what's the ripple effect that caused by the Saudis increasing oil production driving the price of oil down lower what what is that ripple effect and why does that impact us here like it well does? it it impacts us primarily because there is a break even point at which it it doesn't pay uh to drill and uh, it, it, in the old days uh, before George Mitchell uh and Harold Ham who is uh, my partner in, in a not-for-profit organization, uh, George Mitchell really invented fracking. Uh, Harold Hamm did very much the same about at the same time. Uh, the good news is George Mitchell gets the uh, 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 credit for having done that. But I will tell you uh, that it made sh shale production uh, really turned and fracking turned the uh, uh, exploration and production business into a mining business rather than an exploration business. I see. Yeah. You know, we've always talked about the, the risk in drilling dry holes and those kind of things. Well, with the shale and with fracturing, uh, you don't drill dry holes. Uh, your biggest question is, what is my flush production going to be? And so what happens is, and, and in those days, it was $60 a barrel. So the Saudis used to drive prices into the 40s or 50s, mm. and that would uh, stop all drilling. Well, we had to get, once oil prices dropped, I mean, you know, Cambrell, I don't know how long you've been here, but if you can remember, every economist in Houston was predicting $200 oil at one point, and that never happened. But there was no shale production because it was uneconomic. Mm -hmm. So uh, once oil prices got high and got, for lack of a better word, stabilized, which, of course, we see is not the question. And once everybody here said, look, 
we're no longer at the uh, mercy of Mideast oil, right. uh, which is what we did, if you remember Jimmy Carter and the sweaters and the gas lines, and you know, you can only fill up on Tuesday and Thursday. Right. And even. So uh, uh, people were, they, they were driven to become much more efficient in drilling, and so that lowered that price. Now, you can make two cases for right now, or you make three cases. I, I really don't know which one is going to end up proving to be accurate, that the Saudis once again uh, uh, did they do this because of uh, Russia not agreeing to oil production cutbacks uh, uh, with OPEC, mm -hmm. uh, which is what started all of this? Uh, did they do this to battle the Russians because the Russians uh, are much more dependent on the price of oil than Saudi Arabia is, and Iran is certainly much more uh, uh, dependent because of the sanctions and because else on the price of oil. So did they do this to hurt their competitors there? Did they do this to hurt the United States? Uh, we just don't know what the reasoning was for why they did this. Do you uh, see uh, companies going out of business or, or at least layoffs as a result of what's been oh, happening? Uh, unfortunately, and, and let me tell you that a lot of, a lot of my family uh, are involved in the labor markets in, in the oil service industry. But it's inevitable because yeah, the one thing, you know, there, 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 there are two aspects of uh, our business, if you will. Uh, one is the actual going in and turning around a business. Now, Gordian doesn't do much of that anymore. We just primarily do the strategic advisory work and we do the uh, financial issues, but we obviously do that. And the other is the actual turnaround, uh, going into companies and managing them. But you, you can't... Uh, uh, you know, it, 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 you, you have no choice because your revenues are going to be dictated by the price of oil and the amount you can produce. Well, and so the only way to remain viable and profitable is to cut cost internally and to do what Gordian does, which is to go into the courts and going into the creditors and trying and restructure. You know, we, we do everything we can to keep people out of the bankruptcy right. court, but that's, that's the real issue. So the ripple effect here is really on the labor uh, labor markets here. We're and then all the service industries, I'm sorry, and all the service industries uh, that serve that market as well, the manufacturers right. and those kind of things. Fred Zeidman, thank you. Good